Time for another update on the 2JZ BRZ. This thing is looking shiny. I don't normally wear another man's name on my shirt, but with a car this cool, I'll make an exception. And it's painted now. I've noticed you've gone with a white engine bay, a blue interior, and a black exterior. Is this, what, what's happening here? Uh, yeah, white engine bay just makes working on the car a lot easier. Yeah. When it's dark and you can see oil you can see, Yeah, you can see everything. Yeah. And that's not blue, that's World Rally blue. Oh, I'm sorry internet, that's yeah. World Rally blue. That's it is right. a Subaru shop after all. Right? Yes. So it's a nice touch. Yeah, and we didn't bother painting the outside of the car just because it's most likely going to get wrapped. Right, okay. Well, we'll get to the outside of the car in more detail in a minute. There's been a lots of uh, changes in the engine bay too. It looks like it's completely plumbed. You've had some powder coating done, I assume, by our buddy JP at Stripping Tech. Yeah, JP took care of making everything look real pretty. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, the engine's fully plumbed. We're just waiting on Nam to finish making the harness. Well, yes. Actually, he's just starting to make it today, but... Nam is Master Nam, if you don't know. He's their wiring. He's like your master technician here. He is, yeah, lead technician. I, I call him, he's a master to me anyway. <laughs> so this coating intrigued me. It has that kind of like machined look to it. That is a special heat reflective coating, is that right? Heat dispersion coating. Heat dispersion. So it will actually pull the heat out of the aluminum intake manifold okay. and bleed it off as long as there's airflow. So as long as the car is moving, okay. the heat, this will disperse more heat than the regular intake manifold would. Right. And I'm assuming the downpipe was done in that Cerakote finish, yeah. which is a, it's like a ceramic type of finish, is that right? Yeah, it's ceramic coating. It's good to like a billion degrees i don't know the exact specs on it right but i bet I, we left it in the hands of jp he asked what the purpose was of all the different well you knew what the downpipe but you know yeah he asked you know what's this for blah 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 and he just he did everything right I mean, and the orange is just kind of like your signature color yeah i think it will tie in a little bit better when there's some orange on the exterior of the car right. but right i like it now vin's not a fan vin's not an orange guy yeah. he's from vietnam i thought they the orange was a popular color <laughs> our other friend vin is all about the orange all right so the internet experts on turbos will note that the 4088 is back yes uh, what's happened here uh for the beginning of this season because it's a completely new car new chassis new everything we want to keep some things the same. Right. So we're going to roll with this engine package for now. Okay. Probably get a few events sorted out and probably test that new Garrett turbo in the Subaru. Right. In the background, once it's sorted, then slip it into this car. Very good. Okay. Uh, this looks new too, this giant vibrant catch can. Yeah. It's a really nice looking piece. It is sweet and it has a dipstick, which I think is neat. Oh, cool. It looks like it has tons of capacity too, and you've already plumbed a, a drain line on it, which is nice. Yeah, it's got a drain line just in the wheel well, so yeah. we can turn the wheels full lock and just drain that stuff. Sweet, out. that's a really nice setup. And obviously you've got your HD clamps on these nicely powder coated charge pipes. Yeah. Anything else up here we need to talk about? Oh, the power steering. Yes, electric, electric power, power steering. steering. Uh, we stole a pump out of a Mazda 3. Mazda 3? Yeah. Really? And Seeing it does it of any wrecking art. It's incredibly cheap. I think that was a hundred bucks US, maybe could have been less. Wow! But so I bought a couple of them just in case there's a problem with them. Okay. Uh, and it's plumbed into the new S chassis steering rack. Right. Which leads us maybe to discussing the Y Fab stuff and why there's S chassis bits underneath there. For sure. Got a whole bunch of shiny goodness under here, starting with this brand new steering rack. Yeah, brand new S14 steering rack. So this YSFAB kit is designed to work with an S14 steering rack, is that right? Specifically, yeah. They have you cut out the center of the OEM uh, cross member. Yeah. And then you sit the rack into the cross member, whereas the BRZ one used to sit behind it. Right. So this is still BRZ front cross member. Yeah. It's just been kind of like notched out so that the, that can be bolted in there. Yeah, just for FD rules, you have to use the factory cross member. So you've got to have it stock end to end and it is so it's nice Wow, oh, it fits nicely and you got good ground clearance there too mm -hmm. and it looks like the wise fab stuff uses all the factory pickup points on the chassis once again fd rules you got everything has to attach in oem locations so that's why it all is there and there's obviously this beautiful billet knuckle masterpiece out here yeah which moves the whole knuckle quite a bit outboard for more steering angle yeah it's going to have that wheel fitment that everybody hates yeah, yeah. but you have to be able to turn an 18-inch tire 
fully sideways in this wheel well. So. Which is why this tie rod is so long, obviously, to get it all out here. This is right. a Wise Fab piece, too. Yeah, everything's from Wise Fab. It's like, we'll call it a bolt in it's kit. A full I mean, turnkey deal. You have to know what you're doing to get it installed. Yeah. But yeah you could do it. So, not, I, can't sorry, do it not can do it. I can't do it in my home garage. That no, you, you could. I mean, if you're good at fabricating, like the cutting out the cross member is probably the hardest, hardest part, but I, I couldn't do it. Dave can't do it. <laughs> Vin's over. Vin will do it for me. <laughs> this is a cool little deal here. You were saying that's a steering stopper? Yeah, it's a stop. So when the knuckle gets to the control arm here, it stops on this part. And right. then on the back side, it'll stop on this one. Right. And obviously this changes geometry in a way that you get... Is it just designed for steering angle or is it actually changing geometry too so that the tire's in a better position for drifting? I don't know how it works. Well, yeah. It, it, stops camber gain normally okay. when you turn a wheel you gain a lot of positive camber right which wouldn't be good because you'd be riding on the inside edge of the tire right or is that what was edge. happening on the old car it's kind of what happens with the other car the other car had some like ackerman problems which are kind of strange it just caused the tires to scrub across the ground i don't yeah, know if you ever yeah. noticed, I noticed the wear chew on the front tires yeah. off the thing it's because we were kind of band-aiding a problem so this the, makes that all go away yeah they Apparently, I've never driven a car with this stuff, but you know, Pat yeah. said this transformed his car okay. to make it really competitive. More wise fab goodness back here, including the big sexy billet hubs again. Yes. And uh, you were saying that this is a pretty important piece. It looks like a sort of like an old bridge lattice work they've done. Yeah. And you, you, it's so that it'll actually crush in an impact to save the chassis. So yeah, it's, sort it's of like strong and weak at the same time. If you hit it in the wrong direction, it'll just fold and Instead of ruining a subframe of possibly a chassis of the car, I'll just break and... Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, they suggest to keep spares of those. Yeah. And again, is this moving the, the track width out at all? Or? No, they don't move the track width in the rear, but okay. it is a drop knuckle. So we've actually lowered the ride height. It's all built into the knuckle. So I think it's probably about an inch or two inches of lowering built into the knuckle. And so all the geometry is fixed for that being lowered. Yeah. You've got good bump and rolls and all that good stuff. And you can adjust camber up here with the, sh with the shim stack oh, yeah. without changing toe. So if you need to make a camber adjustment at the track, yeah. you can just pull spacers out or put them in, depending what you need to do. That's very and not clever. mess up the rest of your alignment, because normally you'd use this yeah. as your camber adjustment, yeah, yeah. which then will change your toe. Brilliant. Yeah, that's really cool. I've never seen that before. Yep. And you're running HSD coilovers? Yeah, HSD coilovers. Same as on the other car? Yeah, we've been running them for a real long time. It's like so. a tried and true formula for you guys? It works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it works for us, so we want to stick with it. And of course, the yellow bushings up here, PT, we're familiar with that. That's our friends at White Line. Yeah, we got gears in the diff now. Okay. So makes clanky noises. Yeah, yeah that sounds, sounds like it's ready for some horsepower. Yeah. We wrapped last video with Riley doing a little jig with these fenders from your buddies at 2F Performance. They gave exactly two Fs when they designed these, which was the right amount because these actually fit incredibly well. To my surprise, like with a piece this big, you kind of expect it to be difficult to fit up, but you guys were saying it fit up amazingly well. It, it was like mind blowing. When we cut the back of the car off, I had a small heart attack. Really? Just because <laughs> when you see no car, it's yeah. a lot. Yeah. And then Vin started fitting them up. And I mean, it was a really easy install compared to like some of the body kits and things we've done oh, over yeah. the years. They're usually terrible. This thing is like amazing. Yeah, it looks like it fits perfectly. There's even a little line along the bottom here that lines up perfectly with the line on the chassis. Oh yeah, it's got... It's, it's, it's a, a true replacement skin, isn't it? Yeah, I mean... You cut all the sheet metal out underneath. Paco's been doing this for a long time. He's supplied guys like um, Forrest Wang and whatnot. Okay. You know, guys like to r ride the wall pretty nasty. Yeah. So they're using this kind of stuff. Right, and it's fiberglass construction. It's fiberglass. So easily repaired if you bang it up. Yeah. Yeah. Better it's than... 30, than 30 mil wider, is that right? 30 mil over, yeah. Okay. So what about the rest of the, the back end here? Anything new since our last update? Um, things are installed. Uh, bash, rear bash yeah, bars, rear bash bars are in, new, I think. and nicely powder coated, of course. More JP action there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, this wasn't on before, I don't think. Either. No, this is the bumper mount slash fuel neck holder. So okay. the bumper clips into here like it would from the factory. Is car. this the factory clip? It is a factory piece. That's a clever idea. Welded on to this bracket so and then powder the coated. Or... Yeah, that's very so clever. All kind of works together. So the rear bumper clips in here and in, into this black mess yep. here, and you're, you're good to go. Yep, and then that's pretty much like OEM fit for that stuff. So no fasteners underneath because you actually want the bumper to like peel off. Yeah, and... if you happen to hit something or get hit, you want the bumper to take off. You don't want to drag it around because you end up doing more damage than right. if it just falls off and falls right. to the side. I think last time we were here, we were just kind of like mocking this up. 
And yep. you, you thought it might live over here, but obviously yeah, you it, went over here. Yeah, Vin proved me wrong. Okay. <laughs> Good job, Vin. <laughs> <laughs> it fits better over here. Okay. It works out and everything. But now, like, all this stuff's plumbed. All the hoses going front to back. Yep. The bracket to hold that. And, uh, Your catch cans of powder well, coated orange. Yes. All the fancy. Oh, even the chicken coop. He yeah. painted the chicken coop black after yeah. I chirped him last episode. Yeah. So that's a Speed Academy touch right there, BT. Yeah. We'll take, we'll take uh, credit on that one. Uh, the trunk pins, aka hood pins. Oh, yeah, hood pins. Are there. Yeah. yeah. So. Very good. That's a wrap on this episode of 2JZ BRZ. But before we go, Dev's going to pull the 2F fender off here just to show you how easy it is to service in case Riley drags it down a wall. some goodies from ECU Master turned up. You might see those next episode. Riley is like a child here playing with the uh, the new touchpad that they've got. The buttons have a very satisfying feel, don't you think? And they're waterproof, so I can spill my juice on there and everything. It's perfect. Right.